produced by Victoire. Victoire gives a special thanks to the EWF, Empire Wrestling Federation, and Mr. Jesse Hernandez, as well as SoCal Wrestling TV. Find the app on Roku. Hello, fans, and welcome back to another episode of Stylin' the Podcast. For all of our subscribers out there that are coming back, thank you so much. We've had an overwhelming turnout, Rico, in the past couple of weeks. So thank you to all our new subscribers. And if you are new to the channel, this is a show that's all about style. We discuss topics from pro wrestling to health to current events. And I do it in style with my tag team partner, in this endeavor ladies and gentlemen please welcome wwe superstar rico costantino it's styling it's styling time you You know what everybody grab your favorite beverage let's sit down and let's talk let's talk what's going on i got my favorite earl gray tea I i got my decaf coffee right here cheers rico cheers cheers to you Yep. Pick up your favorite beverage and come join us. We've got a myriad of subjects to cover today. But before we begin, you know what would good, look good for uh, to us? Yeah. Lay the smack down on that subscribe button right now. Yep. Don't hesitate. Initiate. Initiate. Hit that subscribe button, the notifications, the like, and share it with all your friends. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, I will address my new attire today. And also, I want yes. to... Yes, I I followed your advice, Rico. You know, you said I needed to spruce it up a little bit. So, what do you think? I I think you're on your way. That this is a good start right here. I'm glad you you listened because it just this is about style. We got to show style. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got to yeah, I've got to match you. Speaking yeah. speaking of style, though, Rico, you stay. You've changed scenery again. Where are you today? Oh. oh. Wow, last week. Uh I'm in uh Southern California. Yep. Uh a CEO. Uh his daughter was getting married at the Ritz Carlton and he called me and uh said, I need you down here. You know, we gotta set up this reception and we need your touch. Yeah. And I said, Okay. I said, What's the guest list? He said about four hundred. I said, Okay. So I went in there and uh Jotted down my ideas, got some ice sculptures, you know, the good cupids because oh, it's yeah. a wedding. Yeah. The, yeah, got that. Um for the theme, because we're in fall. So mm-hmm. I did autumn colors okay. for the theme there. Yeah. yeah. May and, I may I ask who who were who were these people? Who are these individuals? Oh, uh I never discuss my clients. Not even with me, Rico. Well, no, we can't do that. It, it's well, I suppose we are uh, on the air. Yeah, you know, I maybe sometime private, I'll tell you, but we can't on the air. I don't want to embarrass the gentleman or, you know, uh, but he's a big CEO in California yeah. and uh, Ritz Carlton is very beautiful. Yeah. They have a wonderful banquet room. I'm surprised. You know what else is beautiful? There's a beautiful place in Temecula, wine country in Southern California for all you wine enthusiasts and resort spa. It's a spa. It's got the works and it's called South Coast Winery in Temecula. Oh, I've heard of that. Oh, yes. Yes. Premier wine, premier uh, uh, casitas, Mm -hmm. everything. Oh, my gosh. The wine tasting is is at an exceptional level. Yeah. Oh, yes. Beautiful, beautiful landscape there. Tremendous master winemaker. Uh, just a fabulous place to check out. But uh, yeah. switching gears, Rico, for our viewers, yeah. let's dive right into things. Because what some people may not know. Now, Rico has been, yeah, he kind of been in and out of, 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 of the spotlight, as it were, for a number of years. But the reason that you... Um, took some time out for some time was because of some serious health uh, issues that you saw. Yes. Yeah. Um, Through 2015, when I was a police officer, I started getting weaker and uh, the gym wasn't turning out like it was. I I had no energy and I just thought it was like a flu or something like that. I kept dismissing it and pushing through, you know, it's an old saying, suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. And I just kept, going and then uh late 
late 15 or uh I uh, was sitting at my computer at the station and then my vision would just go black. Hmm. And I, but I was awake. I didn't pass out. I knew things were around, but I just couldn't see. Yeah. And uh, I started getting swelling in my left uh, calf area, but on the other side where the tib fib is, and I could push my thumb down and then let go. And the indent was to be there. Gosh. So I knew some edema was happening because I used to be an EMT paramedic back in the eighties. Mm -hmm. So I went to the local fire department and I asked them, do you know of anything? And they checked me out. My blood pressure was a little high and uh, I just kept going through it. And then at the end of 15, I went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I was out of breath. I couldn't breathe. And they diagnosed me with bilateral pulmonary embolisms mm -hmm. i had a blood clot in each lung very low about the size um about the size of a dime mm -hmm. on each side mm -hmm. and it was affecting me yeah and i did i took all my time uh all my comp time, vacation time, sick time, tried to get better, was seeing doctors, and uh, I couldn't recover from it mm -hmm. soon enough. Do they know what caused it at the time initially? What would it cause that? They still didn't. They yeah. still don't. Mm -hmm. But I am. I have to stay on blood thinners probably for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, I did do bodyguarding, you know that. Mm -hmm. And I went to many countries bodyguarding and and it's not you know i've worked and met four different presidents of different countries uh a prime minister so i was working that and i visited uh third world countries and stuff mm -hmm. the only thing i can think of because there's no history in my family is i picked up a dormant bug mm -hmm. and it stayed in my system and i was unaware of it and then in 20 end of 2014 2015 it emerged yeah that's the only thing i can yeah. explain it but it took you i mean it wasn't just that because then after no. that other conditions that hit you and plagued you to the point where you were bedridden for some time yeah for so what, three what, years so what happened after that so what, what was the decline following oh after the blood clots of course you can't move and stuff like that pneumonia uh circulation's bad uh then i got vertigo mm -hmm. or I couldn't get out of bed. Uh, migraines. I was having two, three a month. And I went to a doctor for that and it got it down to about two, which was good. Um, I developed sleep apnea. I had to be on a CPAP machine. They said I was, I stopped breathing 18 to 20 times an hour. That's a lot. So I had to be put on a machine, which uh, was connected to the internet, mm -hmm. which sent the information daily to the sleep center where the doctor was and he was monitoring me and it came to my phone. Mm -hmm. So I got to monitor, you know, it tells you if you, your mask is not sealed, you know, tighten it up or this or that change yeah. the water, you know, very sophisticated and uh, ended up getting neuropathy because I had two discs degenerating in the neck, two in the back, mm -hmm. and was causing the vertebrae to come down and, and shift. So I got peripheral neuropathy. My brain was sent, wasn't sending signals fast enough to my legs. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, high blood pressure. It was triple digits. Upper and lower were triple digits. Gosh, yeah. You know, I mean, I have video where it was like 190 over 110, 120. Yeah. You know, and I couldn't get out of bed because mm -hmm. of the vertigo. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it you know, it's pretty humility humiliating when you got to roll out of your bed and all fours crawl to the bathroom yeah. so you don't fall. Right. Yeah. You know, and I did that for three years. 
I mean, this is going to tie in a, a question I'm going to ask. Well, actually, let's save that for later because we've got another topic that we're going to come up, but I'll come back to that very point. But yeah, three years. Now, during that time, I'm going to put some of the images up on screen. Um, so you'll see audience right now. You're going to be looking at some photographs of Rico back then. Uh, this was the photographs that you just sent me, Rico. Those are when you just started walking around again, correct? The, yes, it was January 9th, 2019, when I had a friend who I hadn't seen in four years contact me, Scott Adams, and I told him what was going on, and we met, and he introduced Vegan to me, mm -hmm. and on January 9th, 2019 is the day I started, okay. and I went on a 60-day juice fast, mm -hmm. and in those that photo, I was 274 pounds. With a 48, 49 inch waist. Right. That was disgusting. Yep. I just, oh. Very lot of weight to carry there. Yeah. Yeah. And then how long did it take for, well, after the 60 days, did you feel considerably better? Did you already start to lose weight? I lost 62 pounds in the 60 days. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. yeah but I was drinking, I made the juice myself mm -hmm. and I was drinking 1.25 gallons of this juice a day and there's a book that was on the internet called fruits and vegetables and i'm looking at it right now i'm trying to see the author yeah. uh i can't see it from here but it's called fruits and vegetables it's a paperback mm -hmm. you can get it on amazon mm -hmm. and in it, it explains the juicing why we should juice and stuff like that yeah. and then at in the back it says if you have this condition mix these fruits and vegetables together mm -hmm. and this will help with that because yeah. you drink it right away yeah you know and uh so i got that book and i read it a few times mm -hmm. and uh i juiced like i said 1.25 gallons and every couple hours i would take eight ounces mm -hmm. eight ounces eight ounces and and i never felt hungry interesting I, did, I didn't even crave solid food how how long did it take for it to start working? Did you start to sleep better, feel better? Well, I had sleep apnea pretty severe. Um, I know by the I started to feel good after the sixty days, which was, was in February. Okay, I mean, um, uh, uh, March, and I well because that year February only had twenty eight days, and I wanted to do the total sixty, so I extended it a day or yeah. two in in march i started feeling good i i could walk around and when i first started juicing i'd have to juice a little bit and then go lay down because then get back weak. up i was so weak i couldn't even do a a, a woman's push-up man coming you know, from someone who's been so physically active your whole life yeah how, but like what was the mental process for you how did you I mean, obviously, when something happens, we have the tendency to just accept it, you know, I mean, it, but like, um, did you uh, do anything to sort of motivate yourself or, or how did you get through that period? Well, actually, I thought that was it for me. Okay. I really did. And I had to come to terms with it. And I was talking to God mm -hmm. every day. And I, and at that time in my life, I had already done a lot. Mm -hmm. I've already accomplished a lot of things more than, you know, I could even imagine. Mm -hmm. And I came to terms with it. I said, God, I said, I'm not going to ask for any more time because I would feel I'd be greedy. Mm -hmm. You've given me such a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. And I said, if I wake up, I'll take my medicine. Yep. And if I don't, I'll be next to you. Yep. So either way, I'm okay. Yeah. So it's all in your hands. Yeah. And I was at peace. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an incredible journey because, you know, sometimes I think when people suffer something like that, they do lose hope and they try it. Yeah. But, but again, you know, and viewers out there, I mean, look at Rico's case. I mean, he tried, you know, he prayed, he came to terms with things, but he, he, he tried, he fought back and look at him today. It looks like we're yeah. sitting here and it's 2002. You know, all yeah. over again. So, so, but yeah, I, I wanted to share a little bit with that, uh, with our viewers, Rico. We're going to share some more over time. Obviously, there's plenty more video footage that you have from that time. Oh, yeah. I did yeah. a weekly video. 
I did weekly photographs. Yeah. And uh, with your expertise, you could put it together. I mean, and then you see my blood pressure leveling mm -hmm. out in time. I'm getting skinnier with the photos. Yeah. And and I'm I'm you know get you know getting to work out again. I was walking yeah. and then I got to jogging. Yeah. You know, and, and it was just like I, I had to learn to jog all over again. Because you because of atrophy, right? Yeah. Atrophy, and I just my mind I had to learn to jog. So when you I say was, you were so when you say bedridden, you literally mean that. Again, to go to the bathroom, go to the shower, you were on your knees, you know, you weren't physically. So people were helping you with the show groceries and cooking and things like that. No, um, I only had six months of help and the rest of it, the two and a half years I did all by myself. I used to order. And the reason why I got so out of shape is because I'd order fast food from Uber. Mm, okay. And delivery, you know, uh, I'd. I'd order two large pizzas and to go down the stairs, I'd have to crawl down backwards mm -hmm. and then crawl to the door. And the pizzas were easy to get up because you just put them up the stairs. I crawl up a couple of stairs. You put them up, crawl up, mm -hmm. you know, but I wasn't eating the best, mm -hmm. you know, because I thought that was it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to enjoy the food I didn't eat before. <laughs> You know, Burger King, Subway, yeah. uh, you know, Panda Express. Yeah. With the extra. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Just throw it on there. Just throw Just it on put there. it on there. Coca-Cola, you name it, whatever. Milk, yep. Go for it. So. Yeah. Now I got to ask, because you indulged at that time, if I were to show you a pizza or a fast food now, what would your reaction be? If it's my cheat day? Maybe, but I where i work now i mean the the drivers bring in food for you know they bring in pizza and that and yeah. dispatchers offer to me and i go nope it's not my cheat day yeah yeah you can and i them. yeah 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 interesting i think i think when you're younger though um because i went th something similar you know i would do a cheat day back in the day and they stay really strict older all all during the week you do crave it, but then after a period of time, you don't anymore. It's just like, uh, you know, because you get so used to healthy foods. And that's yep. another thing, you know, for our audiences out there. It, it is good. You know, you may think that eating vegetables and fruits and things like that is kind of boring at first because your taste buds are overstimulated by sweets and sugar. Yeah. But now and all those yeah. ingredients that they put in the food nowadays. Yep. Yep. Monster food. M M yeah, MSG and uh, all kinds of other. Well, it's time. I'm uh, I... ah, I'm getting warm. You're getting warm. <laughs> getting warm. It's time, everybody. He's gonna. Yep, here we here go. Come. Here comes the shirt. There, ah. you, ladies and gentlemen. Ring worn and ring ready, right there. Ring ready. <laughs> so, oh yeah, Rico. Let's ah. take a, let's take a moment. And share with our viewers what's going to be happening this Christmas. As you can see on your screen right now, ladies and gentlemen, brand new Styling the Podcast yep. t-shirts. They will be available in time for Christmas. So if you are interested in ordering, please click on the description. Uh, well, there's a link in the description, rather an email address. Email us. Tell us your name, your contact information, details, and number of shirts, what you want, and we will get back in contact with you, and we will make sure or all orders are taken care of before Christmas. So, yeah, check that out. And then a couple of other important announcements, Rico, we have. So, in two weeks from now, God willing, because we never know what's going to happen, but I just confirmed Peter Avalon. For you wrestling, oh. yes, yes. For you wrestling fans out there, Peter was best known as the librarian in AEW. He's part of their roster right now, as well as he's a performer in ROH, Ring of Honor. Ring so of he, Honor. He will be joining us. And then also, upcoming shortly after that, we will have, from La Résistance, Rob Conway. Oh, that is good. Yeah, I, I, And I've said it before, if it wasn't for him and Danny's core... I probably wouldn't have made it. That's right. uh, a lot of respect for Rob Conway, the Iron Man. 
Yep. The Iron Man rom com, and, and he certainly is an Iron Man. I saw a video with him this morning, Rico working out, and he's in phenomenal shape, but still yeah. phenomenal. And then, of course, everybody, just a reminder: Chuck Palumbo will be joining us. One half of my team. One half of uh, Rico's team. Obviously, everybody remembers Billy and Chuck. And if you don't, you need to go back in history and uh, research that. Yep. Um, Rico, we'll jump into another topic right now because I think it's important, especially for our fans that are wrestlers. You know, traveling on the road, staying up late, you know, beating your body up takes an awful amount out of you. It's especially going to hit your adrenal glands because when, yeah. when you come out and you're psyched to the max – and then you crash down after that's your adrenal glands pumping out. And then your cortisol levels are all over the place. Now, disclaimer, Rico and I are not doctors. We are not health experts. We're just talking about what we've experienced or what we've heard um, for you, Rico. Um, now, personally, did you deal with an adrenaline high when you went into pro wrestling or was it kind of even kill for you? No, no. I mean, I was nervous before every match, even though I know it was going to happen. I just, I'd psych myself up. Same thing with gladiators. Um, even when I played stuntman, Batman and the Conan show, it was a performance mm -hmm. and I always want to give my best, you know? So I would, the guys would see me rocking mm -hmm. all the time and they just, they got used to it, you know, cause I was, you know, uh, just getting prepared for the match, yeah. you know, the what ifs, you know, we, we could do the match and something might just go wrong. Somebody might get hurt or, you know, you gotta, you gotta, gotta work on the fly. Yeah. You know? So I was really tense. And when I came down, I came down like, Ooh, my God, you know, okay. We did good. I got a smile out of Vince or he gave me a nod. That was good enough for me. Mm -hmm. you know, and then walk down and all the other wrestlers, Hey, good job. Nice. This, you know, and then I would calm down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then I tried to calm down not too quick because mm -hmm. then you crash and then you get tired because after the show, uh, even TV taping, you got to get all your stuff together, get out, get to the hotel, check out, or you've already checked out and you're waiting to get to a flight, return the rent a car, yeah, stuff like that. So you still have to keep some of that energy, which yeah. is useful. Yeah. And then when you get to the hotel room for the next morning flight, you crash. Mm -hmm. And that, those were some of my best sleeps is yeah. after a show. Cause they often you know? say, well, well, we've heard the expression, you know, a good scare a day keeps the doctor away. You've also heard it in Apple a day, but we've heard both those. So yeah. I, I wondered about that too, because I think sometimes when you get an adrenaline rush, you can actually release so much probably tension that you carry around that you're not aware of, but you've got yeah. it down. But also you've got to be aware that your adrenal glands are getting used while right. it's happening. So well, I liked working out because it released endorphins. Yeah. You know, uh, I used to do workout. I mean, I wanted to look good on TV and stuff like that, but it alleviated, alleviated a lot of stress. Yeah. I use that as a stress relief with the insurance investigator job I have because I deal with the public. I'm in Las Vegas. Well, not now, but I work in Las Vegas yeah. and the public can be kind of brash, mm -hmm. you know, not well mannered. Yeah. And, uh, I'm working 12 hour shifts. So right after work, I go to the gym. I get a good hour, hour, 15 minute workout. And when I'm on the way home, I have not a care. Whatever happened that day is gone. It's gone. Yeah. Get a shower, sit back and just conk out ready for the next day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have any, any stress. I don't have extra adrenaline. If I had to do something, you know, uh, a rollover accident, something bad, recover a stolen vehicle, whatever it is, you know, things that are at a height yeah. that cause you to have that adrenaline spike because you need it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? yeah. So that's that's how I get through it. Okay. I was just curious if you'd have heard anything from the boys over the years. Um, maybe there some supplements, things like that. 
um that maybe they could take obviously legal substance yes. legal um supplements um, yes. have you heard of any that could help with uh calming down uh i'm trying to think uh well some people use incense like lavender they'll they'll take a shower with lavender that's a calming okay. you know the lavender candles mm -hmm. uh i've even used those in the past lavender soap yeah uh for calming tea yeah sleepy time tea oh yeah like uh, i have used that uh if i felt myself a little on the edge uh you know, and it, like I said, no surprise. I have ADD and OCD, but you know, there's sometimes I'll get stuck on a problem if I haven't figured it out mm -hmm. and it's hard to shut my brain off. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, so then I'll take the sleepy time or uh chamomile mm -hmm. also is a is is also very good. I've used that in the past. Mm -hmm. Uh I try to stay away from uh sleeping meds or stuff like that. Yeah. Because I don't want to get addicted to it. I don't want that to be the answer. Right. You know, right. I'm always trying to better myself going, okay, I I have to take control of my mind mm -hmm. and let it, not let it take control of me. Yeah. There's also things like minerals. In fact, I was having this conversation today with my wife um, because I, like you, you know, Rico, sometimes when I've got a an engagement that I have to do where there's multiple people in, 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 in a certain place, you know, it can be a little bit overwhelming because you want to do your best. Um, right. but there is a, a correlation to a mineral deficiency. Um, and you know, people with higher amounts of anxiety and things of that nature. So that might be also something else that our viewers might want to check out. If you are feeling anxious in that, obviously speak to a doctor first. We're not doctors, oh, yeah. but, um, you know, there are correlations with certain mineral deficiencies that can make you more heightened state all the time. Uh, another supplement that, I've heard of, and I think I've used it a couple of times, is melatonin. It's a natural. Yes. Yep. Oh, I forgot. Yes, I've used that too. Melatonin. Yes. Because melatonin. your melatonin levels are down. Yep. Yep. But you know what complete, You know what fixes that though, don't you, Rika? No. A nice bit of sunbathing. A nice oh, bit of sunbathing. vitamin D. Vitamin D. Kicking yep. back, letting those those rays hit you because yeah. that will produce the melatonin. In fact, that will help your sleep cycle. You know, yeah. oftentimes we hear so much. And again, if anybody out, out there has been told by the doctor, don't go in the sun, then take their advice, not ours. Right. Uh, of course, sun cancer is a real issue. So that does really yeah. exist. But um, generally speaking, it's good to have sun exposure. Um, yeah. Tidbit of advice for all our viewers out there. If your vitamin D levels get too low, that can spur, spur all kinds of problems with your immune system. So, yes. Yeah. So you've got to keep a healthy level of vitamin D. It will help you in the long run. But in fact, with my recent hip replacement, the doctor told me to take an extra amount of D3. Okay. And uh, he said, take two. Me being me, I took three yep. a day, bringing up the IUs. Yeah. Yeah. But and I'm still doing it today. Yeah. Uh, extra and it and has helped, you yeah. know, that. And like I told you, well, we'll get into it later, but the, yeah. you know, uh, hyperbaric chamber, that's yeah. why I was able to come back. Yeah. It's for a later episode. Yeah. But yeah, the vitamin D is very important. Yeah. Now you mentioned something else there, Rico, that the viewers may not be aware of because that's something else you've overcome hip replacement. So tell us yeah. about this and how that came about. I think that'd be important. Well, I got hurt at work. Uh, like I said, upon, uh, I have like many jobs within my job description. And the homeless where this one of the companies is, is kind of outrageous. They're, they're around and they come on property and, you know, damage the vehicles, try to find in the winter and they try to find a vehicle open. They sleep in it yeah. and then it stinks up the vehicle and everything. So that's part of my function as a field agent road supervisor is to check properties you know for homeless well i was there i had a partner next to me and there was a guy now if he'd have ran off a of property mm -hmm. i wouldn't have chased him but he was going to run into property 
Okay. So I opened the door, put my left leg out, and I pushed, and the steering wheel hit me right mm -hmm. in the groin, right on the hip. And I, it it stopped me from chasing him. I was like, oh, that hurt. Yeah. So I thought it was a torn muscle. After a month of physical therapy, it ended up being a non-displaced fracture on the ball and a torn hip flexor. So all the therapy stopped and uh, it was a workman's comp injury. Mm -hmm. And those people in Nevada are not kind whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They made me wait 19 months mm -hmm. before I could have hip surgery. And I did never, never missed a day at work. Mm -hmm. And I made it so I could work and I still work my 12 hour shifts and stuff like that. And finally this last January they lost and my attorneys won. So they had to give me a hip replacement mm -hmm. and the doctor was fantastic. Steven Sanders over here in, in Las Vegas, bone and joint. Mm -hmm. And he's not much on bedside manner, but his work is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. excellent and he said i'd be out well due to the 19 months of all me walking on it uh it degraded in there took all the cartilage out everything so he had to put a plastic cup mm -hmm. porcelain ball mm -hmm. and a titanium rod down my leg mm. yeah do you feel anything with that or or nothing at all well let's get to that in a second right. so right. he told me okay i'm gonna see you follow up on the 27th. I'm going to take an x-ray and see how you're doing. I said, okay. So, cause I had to be at home. They gave me a nurse once a week and physical therapy three times a week. Mm -hmm. So when the physical therapist came over, you know, she, she did exercises okay. and she's go, okay, I'll see you Wednesday. Okay. So I learned, you know, I remembered what she did. Yeah. So, I would do it right after I do it morning, noon and night till she came back on Wednesday. Yeah. And, and I was just doing it, doing it, doing it. Then Wednesday, she taught me something new morning, noon and night till Friday. Then she taught me something new morning, noon and night. Every day I did physical therapy Yeah, and go to the short or go to the end of it real quick. I'm going to the doctor 27th. It's only been three weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. With me doing all of that, I had got off the walker, was on a cane, and I dropped the cane, and I was walking already. In three weeks. In three weeks. He told me three months. Wow. So it's workman's comp, so I have to carry the walker with me. Yeah. So I carry it in the doctor's office, and he's standing by the door asking me questions and the physical therapist was writing positive reports that I am cooperative, assertive, and, you know, doing what it is required of me. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and the doctor goes, okay, I'll just look like we'll just graduate you to a cane. I looked at him. I pushed the walker aside. I stood up and I walked up to him and I said, doc, why are you going to downgrade me? Yeah. <laughs> he just, he looked at me like that and he goes, well, when do you want to go back to work? I said, right now. Yeah. Right now. Right now. He goes, modified duty. I said, yeah, they have modified duty. He go. And he signed me off right there. That's incredible. I walked into the office. The, my boss looked at me and goes, what are you doing here? I said, here's my clearance for work. Yeah. Put me back on the schedule. Modified. Wow. Modified. Modified that, but still. But that comes back to what you always say. And that comes back to the slogan on our very first T-shirt. Yeah. Here you go. Say it. What your mind can conceive, your heart can achieve. Yeah. Exactly. And I was hurting. And like I said, I'd start the day off on a one to 10, right? I'd start the day off at a five. I hurt that much. Yeah. And by the time I did my 12-hour shift, I was nine and 10. Mm. I didn't work out. And I don't like to abuse opiates mm -hmm. and you can't, I couldn't take opiates when I was driving a car because yeah. on the bottle, it says, do not operate heavy machinery, mm -hmm. but I was eating the crud out of ibuprofen. Yeah. Yeah. To it, try mask. Did it even oh, mask 10, it? 15. It, it took the edge off. I still hurt, but it took the edge off mm -hmm. and that's all I needed to work. Just take yeah. the edge off the pain. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, when I got home, I would take what the doctor prescribed. Mm -hmm. So uh, he gave me a morphine time release. So it was released within 12 hours. He stopped me off on hydrocodone. Okay. And after a while, it my body got used to that. Mm -hmm. So he gave me oxycodone, mm -hmm. but it's I only stronger. took it at night. Well, yeah, but because mm -hmm. I'm I, the hip was getting worse because yeah. I kept walking on it. Yeah. So the pain was getting more intense. Mm -hmm. So um because I had a special pain doctor. I was totally different. And then uh, when I got the surgery, three weeks I went back and I was like, not in any pain. Yeah. So I quit the morphine on my own. Yeah. I just quit taking it. Yeah. And so we go back and the pain doctor and he goes, okay, uh, how you feel? I said, I feel great. Yeah. Any pain? I said, no pain. I'm a little sore, but no pain. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Soreness yeah. and pain. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, okay, well, let's start weaning you off uh, the morphine. I said, I already did. He goes, what do you mean? I said, I, I just quit taking it. How do you feel? I said, I feel good. I don't need it. Right. Yeah. You know, mind over matter. Yeah. That's it. And when I didn't have, I, did, I quit taking the oxycodone. Mm -hmm. just, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head about, again, mind over matter. When you make a decision on something, and, and also viewers, anything you choose to do, even waking up in the morning and getting out of bed to go to the bathroom is a choice. You yes. could choose not to. I mean, the results would be rather disgusting, but you could, <laughs> you could choose not to. But that's a choice. But it's it's the same with if you set yourself a, a positive, a positive goal in life. If you set yeah. a positive and you keep working toward that goal, um, these things happen. Of course, there is, you know, other factors at play. Of course, you know, you know, if you're a person, of, well, if you're a person of faith or not, God is there. Um, but you have to make a choice, a decision. So like Rico, you made a choice. I don't need this. That's it. Done. Finished. It's not a benefit to you anymore. Um, so very interesting. But speaking of things like that, Rico, um, I want to touch into our next subject. Now, we're going to come into this in an interesting manner because um, for those of you who don't know, Rico was involved in Athletes in Ministry, AIM. So before I yeah. begin this, Rico, let's talk, tell, tell the audience a little bit about what AIM is. Athletes International Ministry, mm -hmm. run by a gentleman named Larry Kirchuk. And in the 90s, uh, I became the American gladiator champion. And I worked with 10 different children charities for free. All I said is feed me. And I was doing cystic fibrosis, muscular dystrophy, diabetes, you know, special Olympics, orange County burn unit, you know, all of them. And I just donated my time and it was wonderful. We were doing, you know, I do celebrity golf tournaments. I can't, I can't golf for the, nothing yeah. you know yeah. my short game's good eight nine ten wedge putter i'm good there but you get me on the tee and i hit that wood it'll go about 100 yards and this right turn blinker comes on <laughs> the ball goes over there <laughs> are you a fan of golf rico do you watch the the pga oh i i admire my dad was golf uh loved golf and yeah. he used to play all the time and when i tore my quad in 2000 when the, when vince paid and oh, yeah. i was doing keith clevens every morning i'd be riding the bike right next to tiger woods oh yeah that's right yeah tiger was another yeah and I'm he was a wrestling fan and i was a tiger fan yeah. you know because he just at that, at that time he was just so phenomenal unbeatable yeah, yeah he was a fire you know? yeah yeah so yeah. it was funny that i got to i got to talk to him and i talked to wrestling him and he talked golf with me <laughs> <laughs> so uh oh where was i i lost too many chair shots we were talking about uh athletes in ministry we were oh yes yes so i went and did his charity and uh the man who i forgot his name but he was an oakland A's pitcher you know well known and the wife asked me to come out to aim yeah and i went out there 
And I didn't know what it was. I heard Athletes International Ministry. I was going, and I wore my Gladiator white shirt, my white pants, and my championship belt. I wore it in the lobby. This is Lemon. The Harlem. You know where you, that is? Where are you going? You, you froze a little bit there. Can you repeat? Oh, I said, uh, I go to the hotel, and the first person to meet me is Metal Arc Lemon from the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, yeah. The Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah. I'm a Yeah. Of he meets me and he says, Hey, I got a show tonight. Would you like to be on my show? And yeah. I went, Sure. Yeah. So, I get changed and I get on his show and he's asking me questions. And of course I'm all about, yeah, I did this, me, me, I, I, all that stuff. And then right in the middle of the interview, he looks at me, he goes, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. He goes, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal savior? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes, how do you know? I'm Catholic, Roman Catholic. He went, that's not it. I went, not it. Now I'm on live TV. I said, okay. I, uh, I was an altar boy and this and that. And, uh, you know, I go to church. He goes, that's not it. I went, oh. and now I'm, now I'm starting to sweat, actually <laughs> physically sweat. Cause now I'm, I don't know the answer. Huh. And he looks at me so calm with a relaxed face. And he says, do you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior? And I said, yes, I did. He goes, then pray this mm -hmm. prayer with me. Mm -hmm. And I, he led me to the Lord on his show. Yeah. Back like 1992. That's remarkable. That's yeah. Remarkable. And it's, and then shortly after that, mm -hmm. Tom Sorotnik, God rest his soul. I got involved with a church in LA with all professional athletes like AC green from the Lakers, mm -hmm. just everybody, all professional athletes were there. We had, church and tom sarotnik knew john jacobs and the power team okay. so john was coming through california and i got to meet john jacobs and he says okay i'll give you a two-week tryout mm -hmm. okay two weeks turned into over two years yeah yeah and i got to tour with the power team yeah. you know we couldn't say god or jesus in schools but we could talk against drugs, alcohol, violence, pregnancy, suicide. Mm -hmm. And we use those feats of strength mm -hmm. to get the kids' attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then we would give them, you know, the story of how you need to, you know, stand up for yourself and stuff. And you don't need to follow the crowd. Yeah. You know, and then at night we'd invite them, their parents to the church, and then they'd hear the message. Mm-hmm. What do, you, what do you think it is, Rico? Because another topic that we had on the books today was everything that's going on with uh, Diddy, with Puff. Puff. Oh, so, yeah. well, but, but you're the stark contrast to that. And I say that because you've got, uh, you know, you've been in a celebrity in the world. You've been out there. All right. That yeah. makes you, you know, a celebrity. But through this, I mean, your satisfaction came elsewhere. Someone like him from what we're learning in the media, his satisfaction came from worldly things, money, uh, power, things of that nature. You, it's a different story altogether. Now, we know that God uh, had a hand in that, um, obviously, because of your faith, our faith, my faith too. There's nothing more important. But um, do you think that, I mean, what would you say to somebody who's who's dipping their toes into the world of fame and maybe they're not a believer. And um, what would you say to kind of, and again, we're not trying to push anything upon anybody. That's oh. your personal decision. But what would you say to somebody to, because I mean, it's it's so bad what we're hearing about what he did. I, mean, I know. I know. And I was never P. Diddy fame. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know when people get to that fame, not just P Diddy or rappers or none of that, anybody, they surround themselves with yes men, mm -hmm. yes people, and there's no checks and balances. And I think after a while they start believing their own hype. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think they get lost. Yeah. Where they think they're untouchable and it's okay to do things like that. I, 
I never lost touch. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because I was so great. Believe me, I could have lost touch several times. My feet could have came up to the ground. Yeah. You know, but I had strong parents. Like I said, I'm from Sicilian descent. Mm-hmm. And my father was old school. Mm-hmm. So if he saw my feet coming off the ground, because he was an entertainer in his day. You know, I mean, Ed Sullivan show, he opened the acts at the desert Inn at the stardust. So he had that fame. Yeah. So yeah. he knew how, he knew how to keep it under control and he definitely passed that on to me. Yeah. It's, you some, know. it's something that's needed so much today, Rico. Well, uh, yeah. Especially and with the youth. It, like I said, it's, it's so easy to go down that road. Mm-hmm. It's easy and it's 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 got lights on it and says exit here, exit here. And a lot of people who don't know, like I said, with the young wrestlers and stuff, they don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm I got into professional wrestling 38 and a half, I debuted at 40. Mm-hmm. So I knew what life was about. I have lived a lot of life. Yeah. Some of these 21, 22 to 30 year olds haven't lived a life, and this is all new to them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and people say oh you were a celebrity like you just said but i was an entertainer but it was just a job yeah, yeah. that's how i saw it and you would know is it okay thank you thank you but to me in my brain mm-hmm. it's a job yeah. no different than what i'm doing now yeah. no different than a police officer mm-hmm. it's a job just your job happens to be on tv and you're entertaining people. Yeah. That's how I kind of, I believe I've kept myself in check. So there is a difference. And I, I found this myself too, because I've asked myself questions over the years. Um, you're not, ch- if you're chasing something for fame. No. Then, then you, you know, then, yeah, exactly. Then you're leading yourself down a path of, like you said, we just happen to love pro wrestling. Yes. That's, you know, and it just happens to be, you know, that's, that's a job, you know? So you want to, like you said, you're not chasing the fame. It's a very humble thing to say, um, you know, you're, you weren't a celebrity. Um, but yeah, if you, if you find yourself chasing fame, just, just be careful because well, when I was with Jesse empire wrestling federation. Mm-hmm. Okay. I never thought I would be in WWE. I was just doing that. Yeah. And my brother and I, would drive, rent a car, drive to wherever the event was, yeah. do the event, and Jesse could only pay us $5 a piece. Yeah. And then we'd fill up the car, go out and eat dinner, and come right back to Vegas. Wow. So I wasn't doing it for the money. I was doing it back then to entertain because I, I really fell in love with the business. Yeah. Yeah, it was not the money. Yeah. The fact that Jesse could give me five bucks, I was just happy to get that. Yeah. I'd have, I'd have done it for free because I was having a blast. Yeah, you know, so, and it, and Jesse was investing. Yeah, I, I could tell his heart. You know, when he would tell me things, mm-hmm. he, he genuinely cared. Yeah, now he does. Yeah. He does. yeah, yeah, and like I said, I didn't know. I had no plans of doing WWE. None. Yeah. I just was going to stick with Jesse and ride it out as long as I could. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Howard Finkel calls. <laughs> the Fink himself. The Fink. Oh, he did so many of my matches yeah. and introduced me. Nobody did it like the Fink. Oh, uh, uh, Rico. No one had the voice like the Fink. No, yeah. no one passed the guy in WCW. Who was the guy's name? He had a pretty definitive voice. Uh, I think it was Michael Penzer. Mike Penzer. Yeah, I think that's it. In WCW. He had a definitive voice, but no one ever, no one's ever touched Howard Finkel. No one. Um, he would he would even do uh when Tito Santana would come out, he'd even put on the accent and he'd say, Oh, yeah. from from Tecula, Mexico. And he would do <laughs> he was really good, man. I, so, I was I was so blessed to know that man. Yeah. And and he was a genuine human being mm-hmm. off camera, on camera. The nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. Yeah. yeah. Humble and just, oh, I remember one time he introduced me and he kept saying 245 pounds and this kept happening. And then when I get off the plane at the end, 
look. You're not 245 pounds. Yeah. And it started me up to Finkel, Lillian, uh, the SmackDown guy said, don't ever announce my weight. Yeah. True weight, 128 or 30. Never go above that. Yeah. God, Re let me not that. Your screen froze, Rico. Can you hear me? That I said fake. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, because you froze a bit. You got to edit that out. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Finkel, I told Finkel, quit announcing me at those weights. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm tired of getting confronted at an airport. Yeah. Two twenty eight to two thirty, I'm good with. Yeah, yeah. And so Finkel said, "Okay, <laughs> weighing in at two hundred and twenty eight pounds." I said, "Way to go, Fink." Yeah, yeah, he got it in now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. there's a big difference, a massive difference between two twenty eight and two forty five. I know. Yeah, a massive difference. Yeah, and they said, "Well, you're not six foot." I said, "When I put my wrestling boots on, I am." <laughs> how 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 apparent is that in pro wrestling? Because I heard the other day that WWE actually have a thicker um, yeah an inch thing that, yeah so an inch. they look higher. Well, it's, it's well one it helps you with mm -hmm. the height, but two it protects that it, it gives you better traction and and non traction because sometimes you want traction in the mat on the ring and sometimes you want no traction like if you're doing a baseball slide or something yeah. like that or you know ducking a clothesline you want to stop you know so that inch buffer mm -hmm. i mean for me it wasn't because it made me six foot yeah. it was just i could maneuver my ankles without mm -hmm. having that pressure on it mm -hmm. you know with just a, a flat sole yeah yeah that makes sense so for me, and you know, when I did my jumping kicks, when I landed, I wasn't landing on just a sole. I had that padding, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, moon salts because yeah. your toes. A lot of people don't understand when you get that moon salt going, that extra pad that lift mm -hmm. helps so you don't d your toes don't hit that mat like this. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, so hard. yeah, at, at two twenty eight, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and and when I was a a heel, I never hit the moon salt. So I'm always going to miss. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you want to be as careful as you can. You don't want to get up with a, a, a stub toe. Right. No, that'd be painful. More painful yeah. than some other injuries. But you mentioned there about your kicks and everything. Right. So I need you to share that with the audience too. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Rico, he's not just a stylist. He's actually a lethal weapon. All right. So Rico, list the um, the expressions of martial arts and fighting disciplines that you know. Oh, the disciplines. Yeah, yeah, I started with Ed Parker Kempo when I was young. And then later on, I went to Oru Stairu, which is Japanese. A gentleman named Neil Serenbach won two world gold medals. He represented South Africa. And then I took Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last art I took was in Texas was Taekwondo just to perfect my legs mm -hmm. and uh, two blacks. I have two blacks, two black belts. So how many years total were you studying since I was 12? No. Wow, what, what am I 42 now? Yeah. 42. <laughs> so yeah, a long time. So that's a lot. So what, what, what did you think then of Cobra Kai? The, did you see it on Netflix? The karate kids uh, story continues. Uh, I watched a couple of them uh -huh. and, uh, to me, Danielson became the jerk yep. and the jerk became, they switched places. Oh yeah. And then I got busy and stuff like that. And I don't follow it. Like I never, I mean, me being a Sicilian, I should have been right on the Sopranos. Right. I never saw one episode. Yeah. That was apparently, a, you know, I mean, I never watched it, but I know that people say it was a tremendous show. One I did yeah. see a little bit of was Mad Men. I guess that would be somewhat of a, well, no, not really. That was a different thing altogether. But no, Karate Cobra Kai, um, Rico, is a very good show. But I tell you what. So last night I happened to be surfing, surfing the internet, you know, taking my leisurely time, you know, in my, my gown of an evening, you know. Right. Beautiful gown. And uh, I happened to see on Netflix they put the original Karate Kid back on there. So Which I, one? One? The, the first, first one, one 1984. Oh, and yeah. I, put it, I put it on and I was like, 
Man, if you really look at it now, Daniel was even a jerk back then. <laughs> he really was. His character well, he was an instigator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's an instigator. He was rude to his girlfriend, very rude to her. And I was like, man, no wonder Elizabeth Shue's character left him between one and two. <laughs> Gosh, <He's, laughs> he was terrible. He was absolutely terrible. But um, but yeah, what what are your thoughts on uh, on the on the case, uh, the Diddy case overall? Well, he's that's a he's got a lot of accusations. I heard just driving at work, there was a hundred and twenty new people that popped up. Yeah, hundred and twenty. A hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. Where? I mean, I, I mean. How do you have much that much time to produce your music and produce other people and still have people that you got extra time to be doing that? Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just, it's beyond me. I can't wrap my head around that much. Yeah. It's, you know, but if he did just one of them, mm -hmm. not all this other, it's, it's, he took his profession and used it to use people. Yeah. You know, and that that's always not good. Yeah, it's it's ter it's unbelievable. It, it's like um Cat Williams came out on a on a show uh with Shannon Sharp earlier this year. The and pro football player? Yeah, he's got a show, Shannon yeah. Sharp. Okay. Yeah. And and Cat Williams, a comedian, came out and uh he, he made a statement. He said everyone was going down in twenty twenty four. And he mentioned Oh, I did hear that. Yeah. He mentioned Puff Daddy and uh, and some other guys, um, but his prediction came true. It seems to me, as an outsider watching this whole thing unfold, it's almost like an organized crime unit is what Diddy had. That's what it looks like. It it looks like the music was kind of like a nucleus to make money or the front of something. Um, but I wonder too, like you, how does he have all the hours in the day? to produce all this stuff, do all these deals, and then continue doing all these wild parties. But what's going to be interesting, Rico, is all the people that have been implicated, all the Hollywood. Oh, I know. Yeah, all of them. Big names. Oh, Big names. Man. Big names. DiCaprio, um, Ashton Kutcher, um, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, and now the latest, Rico, I'm not sure if you heard this, but they might be even trying to, put the Tupac and Biggie Smalls murder on him now. Oh my gosh. Well, I know, well, Tupac murder. I mean, come on here. You are right after a Mike Tyson fight on the strip at circus circus. Somebody gets shot. And nobody sees anything. Yeah. I mean, this is when Mike Tyson was prime. There was everybody there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it, it, that had to be organized and from within something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the mob used to do. Uh, you know, it was hush hush. Nobody spoke, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was just okay. He's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and if he, if he, you know, uh, if you never found him, like Hoffa, that's because the mob didn't want you to have your family to have closing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're found in the trunk of a car or something like that. Okay, at least you're found. Mm -hmm. And your family can have closure. But everybody who did join the mob knew that could possibly happen. Yeah. It's you know, you, you you knew what was in front of you. If you crossed something, broke a rule, uh, squealed, it was going to happen. You know, but it, they never took it out on the family. Speaking of squealing, though, Rico... Um, a lot of these celebrities have gone silent. Jay Z, Beyonce, all the people that were there, clearly obvious by the videos you see. Um, silence, not a peep. Justin Bieber. Now, Justin Bieber's could be the silver bullet here because Justin Bieber was. Did you see the tapes with him when he was younger? Okay, I, I've I, I've known him when he was younger, but yeah. So he went to spend time with Diddy. I think it was forty-eight hours when he was like. 14 or 15 I, I don't know what age he was exactly but anyway he went to visit puff daddy he took uh, uh what's that word when they take guardianship over over the minor so he yeah. got guardianship over justin bieber and 
he's on Tamara and he says, you know, he says to Bieber, I'm going to give you this Ferrari or Lamborghini when you turn 16. Then I'm going to give you the mansion when you're 18. He says, what do you want to go and do now? And then Justin Bieber says, oh, let's go and get some girls. He goes, OK, we will. But then, yeah, so this, he's a minor at this point. And then if, there's another tape that surfaced where Diddy meets him in a recording studio. And it's like they bumped into each other or something. They hadn't seen each other for a while. And Justin's visibly you know, perturbed, kind of nervous. And Diddy's like, why haven't you been calling me, man? Why haven't you been like, you're trying to avoid me or something? Like all weird, like creepy stuff, you know? Mm. So because the new stuff that's coming at him, they're saying n people as young as nine were abused well yeah i've already discussed it and yeah. children and women yeah when i was a police officer uh there was some justice served prior to going to jail <laughs> back in the 80s when you could do that yes 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 but yeah if a child or a woman was i made it my priority on that shift to find whoever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and i was pretty successful yeah well there's also a, a scripture that says you know whoever leads these little ones uh don't i'm not you know i don't know correctly uh exactly what it says but if you lead the little ones astray better to tie a, a rope around your neck with a millstone and cast you into cast you in the sun yep cast you in ocean yeah yeah do not lead the little ones no just remember everything, audience members, what you put out and you're putting out in front of children, they're sapping it up. And sometimes they don't know the difference between reality and fantasy. So also yeah. remember that one. You know, I often think about that because of Hollywood, Rico, you know? Yeah, that's why I got out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going for Hollywood and I experienced uh, a bad experience and I went, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah. Uh, nothing's worth what i value myself as i'm not gonna lower my values to be in a movie or just and i i quit no i no. was not gonna be part of the casting couch mm -mm. and i as fast as i got in hollywood as fast as i quit yep yep i too have had time in hollywood and you know it's not anywhere near what it's cracked up to be not no. at all and um um what was I going to say? Yeah. You've just got to be very vigilant with, um, what your. Hold on. I got a phone call. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yes. This is Rico, the stylist. Hold for who? Okay. I'm on hold. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back, viewers here. Just bear with us a few moments. Hello. Yes, this is Rico. This this is who? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yes. I know who you are. Yes. What's happening? Oh, really? Okay. You want me to come there? Okay. No, well, well, no, no. I'm I'm not in Las Vegas right now. No, I'm in I'm in uh, Southern California. Yeah. Well, um, uh, John Wayne Airport's the closest airport to me. You're what? Okay. What? Okay. All, all right. Uh, how soon do you want me to get there? It's on the way. Okay. Um, all right, sir. I'll, I'll be there and I will see you as soon as I arrive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Everything Come here. I, yeah. I got, I got to go. I got to go. Okay. Okay. No, uh, you, you got to finish the okay. show. I, did, I You're not going to leave. Who just called me. Okay. I have to leave right now. Okay. Okay. Close the show for me. Close right. the show. Okay. All right. I'll close the show. 
Okay, viewers, um, Rico had an emergency. I'm not sure what happened. I will find out. I'm sure by the next episode, uh, I will know and Rico can share with us then. But until next time, everybody, make sure you lay the smack down on that subscribe button, hit the like, share these videos, and also go over to Patreon. On Patreon, you'll find a subscription service there where we will have exclusives coming up soon, hopefully by the month of November. But until then, everybody, Keep styling.